I'm going to show you how to take this 6x6 paper pad and make it into a mini album. So let's go. Hi, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums and welcome back to my channel. This is week 12 of Hashtag Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween. This is a mini album walkthrough and then we're going to do the tutorial and then it'll be followed by a real quick process video on me decorating it. I mean, it'll go super quick, but some people want to know, you know, what steps I take to decorate. So without further ado, let's get started. So this mini album was made using the 6x6 Monster Badness paper pad. Just came out this year by Doodlebug Design. I've used up almost all of the paper in this um, six by six paper pad there were these little cut aparts and I chose to use some from a 12 by 12 collection instead of these and there are also two pages of these tags and with the exception of one I just cut one out um, I didn't use the tags except for one and then I have some of the border paper left I did use this on this side I did also use, as I had said, some of my 12 by 12 paper just to supplement it and also paper from my stash. But let me give you a hint. By the solids, I did have some of the PT prints that went along with this, but um, the solid colors came from my stash. Just buy the solids, people. It's just easier. So anyhow, um, I am going to do a very quick tutorial on this and it's then I'm going to do a walkthrough of the decorating of it very quickly. So this is a 7x7 seven seven mini album. I like using 7x7 seven seven when I have a 6x6 six six paper pad. Um, just to get in uh, some decorative paper on the cover, I have to layer a couple of different layers. So I used black as the... Um, base of the mini album then i had orange then i had black then i have pink and then i had some scraps left over that i divided with a just a border strip and then i've got this candy now i also had um some of the odds and ends from the collection if you want to see everything that i purchased to go with this take a look at the haul um this was from the sticker sheet it was left over from when I made another project. And don't forget to check that out. I made, uh, with the 12 by 12 collection, this castle looking mini album. So you want to surely check that out. And that will also be listed up ahead. You can just click on it. And then when you're done with the video, you can go back to that one. So anyhow, I didn't really put a title on this cover. I mean, it says Halloween. You can tell it's Halloween. So let's take you inside. I have a large pocket in the front, and this was one of the cut aparts from the 12 by 12. This paper is from the 12 by 12, and so is that. Now this was from a piece of washi tape. I put it on some white cardstock because you know washi tape is somewhat transparent and um, it just made a nice border. So there's a real big piece here you can get. Maybe not a 5 by 7 but pretty close. You could get pretty close to a 5 by 7 And then this guy is open on the bottom so you can put a photo there. In fact, he can just sort of hang right there so he's with the party. Now the pages are all constructed the same. The front of the page is going to have a flap with a decorative punch. Now these guys are being useful. They're being a pocket. So I've got just some scraps left over. That I think was from the 12 by 12. And I did have some of the 12 by 12 tags left over. The 12 by 12 tags were very useful. The ones that came in the six by six collection, not so much. So we open that up and you can see all of the monsters gathered there. And I do have, it's sort of a belly band. It's down towards the bottom of the page. And it does hold in this little cut apart. And um, I have some stickers and I have some puppy, 
puffy stickers, so all sorts of things. Now, this whole thing comes out, and some I've decorated the pages and some I haven't. And that goes right in. So you can get lots of photos here. That's only one page. So here's the back of that page, and obviously we have a bunch of pumpkins going on. Hello, pumpkin with a sticker. Um, there are these guys, and they are part of a tag. There's the back. Here's another one of those tags. I used a, various assorted ribbons from my stash. And here is a large photo mat that is in that pocket. So that can go back in there. These can go there. And there's that. This was one of the cut aports that I made into a little pocket. And here are a couple more adorable tags. The back of them is a perfect spot for journaling. So you can journal all of your Halloween adventures. And then room here to put a photo. There's a border strip down here, but you still could put a photo in overlap if you need to. These guys are all sitting there um, ready for you to put in some of your photos or journal on here. These little things, now imagine in a 12 by 12, this is going to be about 9 inches long, 8 or 9 inches, I'm not sure, um, probably 8 inches, but they were so adorable that I just put them in the little pocket. So again, this page comes out and room for a photo. All right, let's take a look at the spider page. So I popped this spider up on, after I backed it on to a round, um, just a punch. And then here are some spiders that say eek. And these spiders on the yellow paper came from a border strip. I don't know if I like that one better. Or the green. I had the green left over and I didn't know what to do with them. But in any case, now here was a cut apart and I just put it on flap. Had the little eek here, just sort of hidden. Perfect spot for a photo there. And room for a photo there and there. And this comes out. And let's take a look at the next page. Alright, this is all about the candy monster. So this was from the sticker sheet from the 12 by 12 collection. That was a uh, border strip. I don't remember if it was 12 by 12. I think it was the uh, 6 by 6. I had this little tag and I have these to fill up with beautiful pictures of the kids after they've gotten all their candy. This was a 4x4 four four cut apart that I again made into a pocket. I have one of these adorable tags there. I've got some of the puffy stickers on here just to add a little dimension to that one. And this will open up and I've got one of these little tags back here but you can add a photo and this is open as well. And then this comes out and there's one of his friends there. And it says, I love candy, and there is a heart. So that goes like that. I like this because it you can see the detail on the punch that I used. All right, this will open up. And this is a little different. This is um, two pockets, actually. There's a lower pocket, and this has a car from the odds and ends. And here is a photo mat. So that can go back in there. And this photo mat can go back in there with these little um, cut aparts from that list pad page. All right, so I love the monsters driving the car. Um, I love the cloud background, but I left the monsters so they're a tuck spot. And we've got this guy who's got a flashlight up at his face. So there is that. And then again, there's a tuck spot. So this will open like that. And he is a tuck spot as well. 
and then this will open and there's some more eyeballs in there. And then on the final page, we have a photo mat and another one of the tags. And then my favorite is um, we've got one of the monsters in his book. You can't really see it. I don't know if I'll be able to get close. Well, trust me when I tell you it says dad jokes. Isn't that funny? And then we have another pocket here in the back. There is room for a photo. Oh, I need to put something on the back there. Oh, just the paper. And a large photo mat there. So I will cover that. I'll leave that out so I cover it. And then this was, again, a 4x4 four four cut apart, just backed on black cardstock. And these elements were from the odds and ends. The back page has a orange border, a black border, and then some of the paper that was left over. And this was one of the border strips. And there are the guys sort of waving goodbye to you, but they're driving. They should have both hands on the wheel. But anyhow, here is the spine. And there we are back to the front. It really was pretty simple. I started at 7 in the morning and by noon I had most of it done, just added a couple of odds and ends decorating. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. Now stay tuned and we'll go through and do the tutorial. Again, I'll have the tutorial and the decorating. The decorating um, is just going to be real quick. And the tutorial, I uh, just, I mean, it's pretty simple. So let's get started. All right, so I am starting from the very beginning. I am opening up this six by six paper pad. I have my uh, trimmer so I can cut off the top, but you don't need to on these, I forgot. So I'm just sorting them out, seeing what I have with the six by six collection. And I'm taking out the cut aparts, the border strips and that kind of thing, the tags. And I will be matching up the different colors. So, you know, if I want orange and black, then I'll look for something that's orange and black. And just uh, figure out a little bit of my pages. So since I have five, I'm going to have five pages. And then I'll have the inside cover and in the front and the inside cover in the back. So as you can see here, I'm taking, I'm matching things up to see what goes with what. <clears throat> I end up changing this as we go along, but it's at least a good starting point. So yeah, I like the orange and green because there's green in the pumpkins and then the orange sheet. So once I match it up, then I move on with it. So I go with the blue. Yeah, see this I change as I go. I go with the blue because the blue has spiders on it. And now those ghosts have pink in it and there really wasn't anything to go with it. All right, this is what I have as far as leftovers from my other 12 by 12 collection. And those are the petite prints. I'm putting everything in this stackable uh, divider. So that way I can see things as I am digging through, trying to figure out what matches. Okay, now I'm using some black chipboard, so it looks like cardstock, but it's not. And I'm cutting the chipboard to 7x7. Seven seven. I was looking at that little piece to see if I'd use it for a spine, but no, I want my spine to be 2 inches. I think that piece was 1.5. So now I am taking my uh, cardstock, that's 8.5 by 11, and cutting 5 pieces down to 6 and a quarter by 6 and a quarter. And I am cutting five pieces down to six and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Then I take the seven and a quarter by six and a quarter and score on both sides. This is a real simple page construction. And the reason that I can make it so fast is because the pages are all going to be the same. And so if you're trying to push through, um, make the pages the same. It just goes easy. I mean, you'll, it'll be different because of the color. And then I uh, have scored half an inch and at seven, I'm sorry, six and three quarters. 
and now I am taking the six and a quarter by seven and a quarter and I am putting glue on the outside and folding the flap in. So the flaps will go on the outside of the uh, page so that way there's nothing inside so paper has no reason to get hung up. All right, I've slowed things down a bit. So I'm adding glue to the flap. I've already put the six and a quarter by six and a quarter piece of paper inside and I am doing it. See, I put the paper inside in between those two flaps. I'll add glue to what will be the inside flap. I'm gonna fold it over and then I'll do the same with the other side. I'll add glue and then fold it over and that makes the page. Okay, I'll gather them together and then we're going to make the cover. So I have this roll of adhesive that's six inches and of course those pages are seven. So I add the adhesive, I've put the adhesive on the covers. I had a little excess, I'm cutting it off, I'm taking my um, exacto and cutting there. I had that piece was all crumpled, but I'm going to try to add some of it except for that crumpled bit and then cut it off. You could use glue, liquid adhesive instead. And then since that's six inches and I have another inch left to cover, I'm just going to grab my three eighths of an inch tape and put a couple of strips. Oh, I'm opening a new tape. Yay me. So we'll just put a couple of strips on there. Add a couple to the spine. And then burnish it real well. It's really important that you burnish. I probably should have done more. But burnish your adhesive. All right, I've got two pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper. I'm adding a piece of tape to one side of one of the papers. And then I'm going to use the lines on my table to go ahead and uh, adhere these together. So there's a quarter of an inch overlap. And that's just about the center. Now I'm going to take off the backing of the adhesive. And I am going to do my best to put that down straight and in the center. If it's not in the center, it's not that big of a deal. I'm grabbing the quarter inch tape. I think I was using quarter inch, not three eighths. And I'm putting it on both sides of my chipboard. And again, that chipboard's black. You can hardly see it, but trust me, it's there. Peel off that tape peel off the backing of the double-sided adhesive. You can use score tape sheets as well as this. I realized that I did not burnish it that well, so I was pushing, I was burnishing a little better. And then there was a piece of tape, so I wanted the tape to the tape. So I put that down. Oh, I don't know why I use the black. You can hardly see it, except for the fact that I don't think I had any of the uh, craft color and just put it down. There's just a slight amount of overhang, but not much. All right, I'm burnishing. One thing about these bone folders, the nonstick, sometimes they leave a little residue. It's not a big deal. I'm taking my <clears throat> one inch ruler, it's one inches wide, and just cutting straight across. It. You can have the excess on there. It's not a big deal if you do, but you don't need it. I just might as well get rid of it. Oh, and since I have the cutting mat, I'm going to cut at the corners. You could either use uh, a knife or scissors. I'm comfortable with the knife, so I, and it's in my hand. Now I'm pushing it against my surface. My cord was in the way. Uh, just to get a nice straight fold. And I'm also using my bone folder to make sure it's burnished. So when I go to glue, it's it's already halfway there. It already knows where it wants to go. I add glue right next to the chipboard 
and then on the flap I'm taking my bone folder you see there's that nice bend or bevel to that bone folder oh, it's the best thing it's addressed my craft bone folder all right adding some more adhesive and burnishing and folding over with my fingers while I burnish. I like to get the center where the spine is first, but it doesn't matter what you do as long as it sticks. I'm pushing in, there's, there's the little piece that sticks out sometimes, so I'm just pushing that in. Now adding glue, taking my bone folder and then folding it over and burnishing. And one more end. This is in um, double speed. I wish it really would go that fast. So I'm using the blunt end of the bone folder to make sure that the uh, glue, the uh, adhesive, is sticking. I'm really pushing it down, just making sure that we've got some good adhesion. And now we're going to do the hinge. Let's move that aside and grab a 6 by 11 piece of cardstock. The pages are going to be six and a quarter and you see I'm showing you I've got my little cheat. You can faintly see that I used a sharpie to show the where I generally score. I usually do half an inch, half an inch, and then three eighths. So let me tell you where we're going to score. Start at two, two and a half, three, three and three eighths, three and seven eighths, four and three eighths, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and one eighth, six and five eighths, seven and one eighth, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. That will give you five hinges and four gussets. Okay, now we're gonna fold in half of the two uh, half inch lines. So there's the half inch, half inch, fold in half. The next set of half inch pair, fold in half. And you'll do that to all five pairs of the half inch. And make sure it's straight and then burnish. And then I'm going to grab it together and sort of pinch it and then go back and forth. Then go to the next one. You see I've got my four fingers holding the paper and then my thumb will grab it to, um, to pull it. Play this over again in slow motion if you want to get a better view. I'm going to go ahead and add glue into the pair of hinges. And I'm going to do all five at once because I've done this before so I can do it fairly quickly. That's why it doesn't take me very long to make a mini album. But if you haven't done this method, then just do one set at a time so you don't, um, so the glue doesn't dry. And then I grab a mat to put it on because I don't want my table to get dirty. Turn it over and then again pinch and squeeze to make sure those sets of hinges will stick together. By squeezing, the glue will be distributed. And then I take my bone folder, fold all the hinges towards me, and just go. I'm trying very carefully at the end. There's usually some that seeps out. So grab something to clean that if that's gonna happen. And then I fold them away from me and use my bone folder again. And more came out. So there we go. There is our five sets of hinges. Now you should let it dry, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And I just center it. So top and bottom, there probably is about a half inch. There is exactly half an inch because it's six inch and the book is seven. So half inch, top and bottom, and maybe three eighths of an inch side to side. So when I eyeballed it, I knew exactly how uh, much room I was going to have. So as you can see, I put glue in the channels and then add glue uh, to the underside of the gussets. And then I will put glue 
I call those the wings. I don't know. There must be another word for it. But I don't put glue all the way on them because I want to still be able to hold it without getting glue all over my fingers. So now I turn it upside down and again eyeball it and just make sure it is as centered as can be. Take some extra time with this if you need to. I take my fingers and I burnish it with my fingers at first because then I move over the hinge and burnish it. Move the hinges over. I start at the center and then go outside one on each side. It seems to um, help the glue get distributed and then the hinges are exactly where they need to be. Oops, and I made a mess. Clean it up, no big deal. Take my bone folder and burnish. And I'm burnishing on uh, one side of the hinges. And then I'll do the other side. Just making sure that it is adhered. So again, this bone folder's got a blunt tip. So I know I'm not going to uh, A, make a mark because it's a non-stick bone folder, or B, um, scratch it. Now I'm pushing into where the um, chipboard meets. What's happening is that top layer of paper is going to meet with the double-sided adhesive we put next to the chipboard. I'll lift up the side and add some glue. I mean, to be honest, you don't have to because this paper is not going to go anywhere, but it just makes me feel better that it's in nice and secure. So I put some towards the top and just make sure there's enough and burnish. And make sure that paper is on there nice and tight. I mean, really, we're half an hour into it and we've got the pages made and the hinge and the cover done. So, well, that's pretty good. And I was messing around with the paper. So it really was 20 minutes. So now you're going to take the paper. I'm dry fitting it here. And it's a tube. So you're going to have the tube fit over the hinges. It should be pretty easy because the paper is six, the pages are six and a quarter and that hinge is only six inches so it should be fine. So I put it on and then I push it down and then I come up maybe a sixteenth of an inch just so it's not sitting right on the bottom of the um, spine or the gusset I guess you'd say. So I open up the tube I start from the back, you may have noticed that. And make sure that the pages are lined up with the one in the back. The one in the back's most important, get that one straight because everything else is going to be based on that one. When I put the glue on, I, I try to stay in the top half. I don't go any lower than the top half. When you put the tube on, for lack of a better word, it help, it will smear it a little bit and go down. But I don't want too much because I don't want it seeping out. So I just try to stay at that half inch mark. More glue. I did used to use score tape to put it together. But I, I feel like there is a process that happens when you put paper on uh, two pieces of paper with glue in between. I feel like the fibers of the paper mingle together to, to lock it in. I feel like the score tape sort of sit, sits on the surface. Now it's okay to cover the book because, I mean, it's okay to cover the book. And then that's the last page or the first page. Yeah, there was a little bit of glue. And now I'm going to take my bone folder and go through all the pages and burnish. And just give it a good burnish with your bone folder. And there is our book. All right, I'm going to put that aside 
and I am taking the scraps of when you cut the six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So, um, I don't know what that is. Five, four and three quarters, five and three quarters. And I'm cutting it down to seven and a quarter. Yes, I have five pieces of paper in there. That is the best cutter in the world. As you can see, it's been through a lot. If anything were to happen to it, I'd cry. I, you can't buy them anymore either. But I can cut easily five pieces of paper. And now I'm going to put the short end at the top, score half an inch, short end, long end at the top, score it half and uh, six and three quarters. We're making pockets. So we're making five pockets. So as I said, we're repeating the um, pattern of the pages. So each one is going to have a pocket on the back of the page, and then we're going to have a, um, a photo mat inside the page, and it's going to have a flap to the front. You'll see that in a second. But anyhow, let's make five pockets out of the leftover paper. And just like that, it's done. Um, oh, I'm, I'm making a pocket for the back. So since the cover is seven inches, that's an eight inch piece of paper. Actually, it was eight and a half. I didn't cut it down. But I scored it at half an inch and six and a half. And then I'll cut off that half inch right now. And then cut off. Uh, the corner. So you're going to cut off right where the score marks intersect. I'm not going to miter the top of it. I guess I'm just getting lazy. But it actually, it doesn't make it that much of a difference. I think the big thing about that is you can't see it if you miter it, but oh, nobody's going to look for it anyhow. And, and two, I'm going to put decorative paper inside the pocket to cover the pocket, so it doesn't matter. I'm using the six by six inch papers. All right, now I'm gonna burnish on all of these. Just do your best to uh, burnish on the folds, just so they stay in place. We're gonna glue it so it's no big deal. All right, almost done. That's the bigger pocket. All right, so I'm going to take that big pocket and put that in the book. Make sure that you don't go over where the, the page is. Don't go near the hinge. And now I'm taking pockets and putting them on the backs of all of the pages. Sometimes I add the tape to it. The, like you would put glue down, put it on the page, open it up, and right here, and put uh, tape on it, but I'm not doing that. I think there was in one, one instance that I wish I had. But again, I'm putting six by six papers inside the pocket. So I know that nothing's going to get hung up. Just making sure it's on straight. Probably using a lot of glue in this project, huh? Once I put it down, you might see I take the corners of the top corners and sort of open, see, have it so the pages open up a little bit. Just squeeze it. Okay, now I'm getting ready to um, do the flaps. So that is a six by 11 piece of cardstock, and I am scoring at six. You could make it a little bit smaller, five and three quarters if you wanted to. If you put a lot of stuff inside the pocket, you might want to make it a little smaller, but in this case, it wasn't necessary. I have my Dress My Craft um, punch. It's an edge punch. I haven't used it that much, so I have to figure out the how this actually works. You have to push down f harder than I thought. All right, there you go. 
and then trying to match it up, you know, that always is a hassle. But anyhow, I um, wanted a little decorative touch onto uh, one end, so I'm using this punch. If I had a plain scallop, I would have used that. Okay, and now I'm going to take them and I am going to burnish on the fold line. Clean up my surface. So just fold them. And I'm not even burnishing, am I? Shame on me. Maybe I grab my bone folder in a second. Maybe I do it off camera. Yeah, that's it. I do it off camera. And then I take my book and I immediately put these in the book. And then I'm going to grab some coordinating solid cardstock. Oh, my husband's bringing me coffee. Oh, yum. Um, anyhow, coordinating cardstock to make sure that. I have enough for the photo mats. So I'm taking five different colors. Just saying the blue is a good match. Uh, that one orange is pretty bright. But I am cutting them five and three quarters by five and three quarters, cutting two of each color, and then I will put them on the photo mats. Okay, here I'm cutting the paper again, five and three quarters by five and three quarters, putting my sets together. I will use this, uh, again, I forget what for, but I'll use it. And now all those pages I just put in, now I'll take them out of the book. Yeah, don't know why I did that. And I do use some ATG in addition to liquid adhesive just on the mats. I just want to make sure that they stay real well. And I don't think I show you me doing all of the mats, but you get the idea. I'm working on the cover because you know you should always work on the cover first so you know exactly what you're going to have and you don't run out of paper. How many times have you guys done that? So I am just making some squares. The book is seven by seven, so I'm going to have uh, six and three quarters by six and three quarters orange and then this black is six and a half by six and a half and then I'm trying to decide if I want to use the pink because I like the pink and orange but I guess I wasn't sure if I wanted to so this is just about six by six it might be a little little bit bigger but pull everything over and start uh, figuring out if that's the right color combination. So I'm taking this plaid. I love that plaid. Isn't that great? Do I like the orange with it? Is it too much? So I'm just playing around with it, trying to decide um, the size of the pieces that I'm going to put on. And I know I want to have that house, the little door, showing. Um, but getting there, that's the whole thing. Now, all right, so I have these two pieces for my 12 by 12 paper, the plaid and the candy. And I have them right up against each other so they are about six inches by six inches. And then I'm going to cut them in half because I'm going to use them, I think I'm going to use them for the front and the back, but I end up not using them for the front and the back. But anyhow, let's layer so you can see what I'm doing for the front. All right, move everything out of the way. Straighten the mat. All right, so orange goes on top of the black and then black goes on top of the orange. The black, I'm meaning it, it's going to sit on the cover of the book and it's got a black cardstock base already. So then pink, like I said, I like the orange and pink combination. I mean, it's crazy, but it's Halloween. 
so why not? And then, um, yeah, just trying to figure out exactly how this is going to be. Do I want a bigger piece on the bottom of the candy? I don't like it exactly in the middle. And then, does that look good? Yeah, it's getting there. I sped this up a little bit, or else we'd be here all day. All right, so I put the plaid on top of the pink, and then the candy on the bottom, and then I'm playing to see if I want that orange strip of paper. It's not quite big enough, so I just cut it in half because that 4x4 four four cut apart's going to hide what's in the center. So I take that, make sure the straight edge is right on the straight edge. And there we go. Yeah, there's a little hole in the center, but it's no big deal. All right, I like that little cut apart. Um, I think it says, trick or treat, smell my feet. I think that's what that says. And cut it in half. Center it on that orange strip of paper. So yeah, it doesn't meet, but it doesn't matter. And then I want to put that cut apart on a piece of black cardstock. I cut it down to four and a half by four and a half. Do I want orange? Yep, I'm going to put it on orange and then on black. I think the cover of the book is going to be about half an inch thick by the time I'm done. There was a little piece that needed to be cut off. So there we go. I like it, but I'm thinking it's too matchy-matchy. It's too symmetrical. So, so I take a doily. In the end, when I look at it, I'm thinking, why did I put that doily on? Who cares if it's symmetrical? But it's okay. It just needed just something. A little different texture. Later on, I thought I should have put one in the bottom right corner, but then again, it'd be sort of symmetrical. So there we go, all set and ready to put on the cover. I add a reasonable amount of adhesive because I don't like my covers to come off. And there we go. Now, I am going to decorate the book. I'm making another pocket for the front. I'm going to decorate the book in fast motion without you guys listening to me. So sit back, grab your coffee. I probably forgot about mine. And I'll catch up with you at the very end. No, oh, wait. I thought you were done with me. Um, I just want to tell you that some of the parts I glue down, but once I get to the pages, I don't glue. I just put little dabs of ATG. The ATG will hold it in place while I go through the rest of the book. And if I change my mind, it's no big deal. I can move things around. And also if I decide to put flaps in, now I'm not going to have too many flaps on the pages, but you never know. There's a couple of pages I do end up using flaps, but things are not glued down. It's not too late to add other elements to it. So um, I do go back at the end and glue everything down. All right, let's get back to it.
And that's it, ladies and gents. I go back through and add a couple more stickers, a couple of more, um, I don't know, whatever I can find. I take the tags and I do put ribbons on them, but you already saw that in the walkthrough. So that is my project for this week's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022. Don't forget to check out the other fabulous ladies and see what they've made for you. And check us out next week and see what we're going to do for Halloween. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a fabulous day. <music>